Hey guys, so we all know the significance of the Nile River in Africa. It's the longest river system in the world. It's no secret that up to 300 million people in Africa live in areas without free access to clean water. So water here really is a life or death problem. Almost 100 million people and almost the entire Egyptian economy are based in the Nile Delta and Valley. So why is Egypt threatening war against Ethiopia for the Nile's water? Well, Ethiopia comes from the ancient kingdoms of Punt, Damat, and Aksum that controlled Eastern Africa and part of the Arabian Peninsula back during the times of the Egyptian pharaohs. It was one of the first countries to become Christian and is proud of being the only African country that was never a colony if we don't count tiny Liberia. At the end of the 20th century, Ethiopia was still a very poor country. Over 50% of the population lived on less than one and a half dollars a day. In 2018, the IMF called Ethiopia the fastest growing economy in Africa. And since 2000, the GDP has grown almost tenfold, which lets us talk about the Ethiopian economic miracle. Meanwhile, almost 50% of the 112 million population is under 18 years old. Ethiopia is building modern roads, and if you're able to ride on the six-lane Addis Ababa, Adama Highway, only the surrounding environment will remind you that you're in Africa, not somewhere like Germany. In 2015, two high-speed trolley lines that carry 200,000 passengers a day opened in the capital. That's a huge achievement for an African country. They also built a high-speed railway 477 miles long that connects Ethiopian capital Addis Ababa to Djibouti and its port, Dorla. Since Ethiopia doesn't have access to the sea, this railroad is critical for the country's economy. Since 95% of external trade in Ethiopia occurs through the Djiboutin port, but Ethiopia's development overall is slowing down due to a lack of electricity. About 65% of the population now has lost access to electricity, and the profitability of making it in the country is decreasing due to daily unpredictable power station blackouts. To solve these problems, they decided back in 2011 to build a hydroelectric project costing $4.6 billion called the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam which is called Hedas in Ethiopia. The hydroelectric dam with a projected 60 gigawatt hour power supply is in the northwest of Ethiopia on the Blue Nile River, the right branch of the Nile. An agreement in 1929 that regulates the use of water from the Nile Basin and another agreement in 1959 give Egypt and Sudan the right to almost all of the Nile's water. A document from the colonial era also gives Egypt the right to veto any country's projects that are higher up the river that might affect Egypt's amount of water. Neither document considered the need of water for other Nile-bordering countries that did not participate in the deal, including Ethiopia. The Blue Nile River provides most of the river water in the region. Ethiopia announced that it is not bound to the old agreements and began building the dam in early Arabian Spring in March 2011 without consulting Egypt. In 2020, the reservoir began to fill, and after it will be put into use, the 6 gigawatt power station will become the most powerful one in Africa. For comparison, the Asuan power station in Egypt produces 2.1 gigawatts an hour. The Hedes gravity dam made from roller compacted concrete that is 574 feet tall and 5,900 feet long. It has the power room on the left bank with six 375 megawatt hour generators a central part with water discharge, and the right back has another power room for another 10 375 megawatt hour generators. The water reservoir is 595 square miles, and its full volume is 18 miles cubed. Also, the lack of an agreement for Nile water distribution threatens to significantly worsen the relationship between Egypt and Ethiopia up to and including war. The deal breaker is in the timeline for filling the reservoir. Ethiopia plans to fill it in three years, but Egypt demands the process last at least 10. Additionally, 
A large part of the Nile waters that reach Egypt run from the Ethiopian highlands from the Blue Nile. So the expression from the father of history, Herodotus, Egypt is the gift of the Nile, who lived 25 centuries ago, is as accurate as ever. In Egypt, according to the data that were in the letter sent by Cairo to the UN Security Council, each Egyptian is currently receiving 20,000 cubed feet of water out of the international norm of 35,300 cubed feet. This large decrease in water flow in the Nile threatens humanitarian and economical catastrophes for the country. The volume of the reservoir in Ethiopia is 2.6 trillion feet cubed, while the annual flow of the Blue Nile is, on average, 1.7 trillion feet cubed. Additionally, Cairo is reasonably worried about the decrease in water reserves in the Nasser Lake, the reservoir for the Asuan Dam, which will lead to a decrease in electricity production and the lack of water for the country's irrigation systems. Now, almost all of the fertile land is in the Nile Delta region, and it irrigates 12,700 square miles. Currently, agriculture makes up about 30% of the population's labor and 17% of the country's GDP. The subtropical climate and affordable water use became possible after the Asuan Dam was built, which allows for two to three harvests per year. President of Egypt Abdel Fattah el-Sisi said that due to the lack of water in Egypt, millions of jobs will be lost, thousands of acres of fertile soil will disappear, the amount of harvestable land will decrease, the cost of imports will sharply rise, and urbanizations will increase rapidly. Filling the reservoir in three years will threaten Egypt with an 882 billion feet cubed and will result in famine. Ethiopia responded by telling Egypt to build a series of canals to transport water from their Nasser Reservoir to irrigate the southwestern desert region of the country and don't want to wait for Egypt to turn their deserts into flowering gardens. The world's largest pump station, Mubarak, has a pumping capacity of 42.3 million feet cubed per hour, and it's located near Tashka. The main part of the New Valley project was launched in March 2005. It pumps water from the Nasser Lake that is transported by canals called the Sheikh Zayed through the valley turning 772 square miles of desert into fertile soil. So the third interested side in this saga is Sudan, who stood on a united front with Egypt against the Ethiopian dam for a long time, but has significantly changed its position in recent years. That's because Sudan doesn't depend on the Blue Nile as much as Egypt does. Additionally, Building the dam will let the river's flow be stabilizing, which will create beneficial conditions to grow their harvestable land. Also, the changes of Sudan's position affected the promised delivery of electricity at a lower tariff. So the first two turbines in the Hades Dam will go online in October 21, which will provide Ethiopia 750 megawatts of power of electricity. The Ethiopian prime minister said, We are tired of begging but our desire to grow doesn't mean that we intend to harm other countries. According to Ethiopians, the hydroelectric power plant will have enough power to satisfy the demands of the country's electricity with surplus available to sell to its neighbors in Kenya, Djibouti, Sudan, and Egypt if they will build and modernize their power lines. Building the power plant cost Ethiopia from five to six billion dollars, and most of it was obtained from shares and private investments. For many Ethiopians, this dam isn't just a source of electricity, but the beginning of a bright new future. Most citizens don't have access to electricity or to normal education or even the benefits of civilization. They can't develop normally. Also, the large reservoir is expected to give Ethiopia about 7,000 ton of fish a year, which is important for the country since it sometimes suffers from famine. After the blaming and threatening stopped, Egypt, Sudan, and Ethiopia were able to agree to the creation of a joint fund to develop the water infrastructure. And that means despite the serious contradictions for such a spicy problem in the region, difficult negotiations are beginning in order to find a compromise. There's an inspiring optimism in the air, and that lets us hope for a victory in the Nile Basin. Well, that's all for today. Be sure to leave a like and comment. Let me know what the most interesting part of this video, which involved way too many numbers, was. <laughs> and we'll see you again next time.